It may have been wrong for us to take it, but now that we have it, it is certainly dangerous for us to let it go. This is a famous quote from Pericles of Athens about the Athenian Empire that figures in the story that I want to talk about today. Now, if you remember, the last episode that we talked about, we were talking about Alexander and two of his generals, Craterus and Hephaestion. And I was making a, a kind of a storytelling point that every story, this is kind of a timeless principle of storytelling, has to be about something. It has to have a theme. And that every, every character within the story has to represent, in addition to himself or herself, an aspect of that theme. And we were talking in the previous episode about a massacre that had happened under Alexander's watch and how these two generals, Craterus and Hephaestion, had taken opposite sides with Alexander caught in the middle. Craterus, this is a real character who was Alexander's toughest and most formidable general, he took the position that all actions are legitimate in war as long as they produce victory, including massacres, anything you name it. Hephaestion, on the other side, took the opposite side, and he said that war, in, as the way they were fighting it, had become a wicked and odious and unholy, and because it had broken away from any sort of ethics or self-restraint. So what we're really talking about here within the realm of the warrior archetype is the pure warrior archetype that is all about victory and the warrior ethos that brings in an element of self-restraint or of morality, of inclusion of the foe as a fellow human being. So I want to read you a scene this, uh, between Alexander and Hephaestion from this same book, from Virtues of War. And this, it follows on that thing, angel on one shoulder, devil on the other for Alexander. And Alexander narrates this scene. My estrangement from Hephaestion, though more painful than ever, has evolved to that state at least in which he and I can address each other with absolute candor. When again alone with me, he declares this campaign odious, I cite great Pericles of Athens, who speaking of a city's empire stated that, quote, it may have been wrong for us to take it, but now that we have it, it is certainly dangerous for us to let it go. Ah, my mate replies, then you admit the possibility that this butcher's war and we who prosecute it may be wicked and unjust. I smile at his clever turn. This is Alexander talking now. If we are wicked, my friend, then almighty Zeus himself has founded our iniquity, for he and no other has established the imperative of conquest within our hearts, not in mine alone or yours, but in every man in this army and all the armies of the earth. He has made us this way, Yes, and every lion and wolf and eagle who were impelled by their natures to contend for supremacy. I indicate the bronze of Zeus Heterios on my writing stand. This is Alexander talking. Plead your case not to me, Hephaestion, but to him. But for all these words of mine, my friend has won me. That night I make up my mind. I will end this campaign of massacre before it destroys us all and remarshal the corps to cross into India. We must have a good war. We must have a war with honor. Now, what we're talking about here, Alexander's answer to Hephaestion goes kind of to the heart of every moral question, I think, in the universe. Here we are, if you think about it, human beings as well as animals in this world that God made or somebody made, in which, in order for us to survive from one day to the next, every one of us, a hawk, the hawks that are flying around here, a lion, a wolf, anything, must kill another sentient being, another being that has a family, another being that wants to live for another day and eat it. That is at the very bottom of the concept of the warrior archetype and the concept of warriorhood in general. And it brings us to a really deep question. What is this world all about? Who made it? Is there any justice? Is justice even possible in a world that's made like this? Mm -hmm.